In truth, I seriously considered trying to record this tag in like a t-shirt and a suit jacket like my freaking dude Brandon Sanderson, but I'm not cool enough or nerdy enough somehow. It's a combination of those two, my dude Brandon. Hi, my name is Michael Nip, and I'm going to be doing the Brandon Sanderson book tag here today. This one is created by bookish best friend Christy Lewis from the channel Christy Lewis, Dostoevsky in Space, and it is a wonderful tag. It's been spreading all over through my friend groups. I want to expand it to some more people. I want to answer the questions for my because it's fun and it's been a minute since I did a tag. So let's jump into it. Problem number one, Brandon Sanderson wrote many early novels while working as a night clerk at the Provo Hotel. What book kept you reading late into the night? I am getting older and as I age, I find myself more and more unable to read at nighttime. If I lay down at all, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is, I will probably go to sleep. In my teenage years, however, I would be reading and I could stay up and read for hours. The book that I remember doing this with most vividly was called Skin by Ted Decker. I remember staying up until probably two or three in the morning when I finished that book. And I remember putting the book down on the ground and I was just completely shocked and in awe at the ending of that book as, as well as like what transpired throughout that book. And I was just so unsure of what I just read. In addition to it being late enough that I was like, well, did I really, am I dreaming right now? Is this real? That I sat the book down and I was just, I, I sat in bed just kind of staring at nothing for like 15, 20 minutes before I fell asleep, just in utter awe at the weirdness of the ending of that book. Number two, Brandon's complex magic systems set his fantasy apart. What subject do you love to read about in all of its complexity? I feel like I'm going to cheat and do a throwback to a Pacific Northwest story common trope, which is when there is secret hidden darkness inside of people and it begins to manifest at large to other people. That is a story that I've read many times before. That is a story I think is extremely true and applicable to lots of people and places. And it's one that I could read about in depth seemingly over and over again. Brandon gets book ideas from watching other storytellers fail to execute a concept well. He figures out how to do it better. What two books handle the same concept in strikingly different ways and which did you prefer? I'm gonna use this opportunity to talk about a book series that I personally find really cool that no one really talks about partially because it's Christian fiction probably. Ted Decker wrote a series of books called the Circle Trilogy. Books are called Black, Red, and White and it's not very secret that these books are meant to be allegorical in a very similar way to the book series The Chronicles of Narnia. It's not veiled, it's not hidden, it's extremely obvious. But both of these books tackle this subject on very different levels. One is like a children's fairy tale and one is like an adult science fiction fantasy thriller hybrid. All three of those things. I very much love this trilogy. I don't necessarily recommend all of the expanded universe stuff related to it, but I very much love this trilogy and I think that it handles one aspect of its allegorical message much better than I've ever seen in any attempt at allegorizing the story of the gospel from the Bible. I don't want to give any spoilers because I think that would ruin the effect, but the Circle Trilogy I think does this one specific thing way better. And also it's just a dope series that I would recommend if it at all sounds interesting to you. It's about a dude that starts getting randomly chased by people who are trying to kill him. He doesn't really know why at all. They shoot him in the head and he wakes up in another world. And then when he goes to sleep in the other world, he wakes up in this world. When he goes to sleep in this world, he wakes up in the other world. Hijinks ensue. Child Brandon was recommended several books about dogs that die. As a result, he became a reluctant reader. Please share a formative good or bad childhood reading experience. Okay, first of all, I don't I'm not very old, so I don't feel like I can give the best advice, but something that I feel like should be common knowledge. When people are learning to read, when children are learning to read, and you're trying to get them into the skill and the hobby of reading, and you want them to learn to love reading, I understand that there is a desire to push on them what you consider important literature. And I don't think that there's necessarily a problem with that. But if you do not let children read books that they will like to read and books that they personally will find interesting, if you don't let them read fun books, they probably won't like reading. I've seen this manifested in so many cases where people grew up reading because as a child, they were never allowed to read fun books or interesting books. They always had to read the books that schools make you read, which is here, neither here nor there. But kids need to be able to read fun books too. If they can't do that, well, how can we expect them to love reading? Rant over. I will say before going into this story that I was able to read really fun books as a kid. I, as a kid, had to read books that I hated and I got to read a lot of books that I loved. But there was a specific book 
that for some reason I just anti-clicked with. I hated it so much. I despised it in every facet of its being. I know nothing about the book as an adult. The book is called Johnny Tremaine. It is some kind of historical fantasy about a boy in the American Revolution, I believe. I know nothing about this book except the fact that I think that two or three different times I was supposed to read this book for school and I either pushed myself through or did the thing where like I figure out enough of it that I can bullcrap my way through without reading it. I freaking hated this book so much that I just have decided for until now that I'm an adult and I'm trying to expand my horizons that I hate historical fiction in all of its facets, mainly because of this book and books like that. I would rather just read straight history text than historical fiction most of the time. Maybe that's changed as an adult, but as a kid, I freaking hated it. Brandon and several friends host the Writing Excuses podcast and they frequently invite guests. Please tell us about a collaborative fiction project and what you thought of it. So for me, collaborative fiction is weird because you have two authors that usually have extremely distinct voices trying to join forces and and do something that is just extremely uncommon from what I can tell. I've seen instances where it, it is awesome and maybe it's because I didn't know the individual authors going in. Like I didn't realize until like this week that Leviathan Wakes, the Expanse series, that was written by two authors working together. Didn't know that. That book is awesome. The first book, at least. That's all I've read. As a child, I remember being extremely hype for the collaboration of Ted Decker and Frank Peretti. I'm getting so much Ted Decker in this freaking tag for some reason. Ted Decker and Frank Peretti came together to write the book House. It is extremely weird. I feel like Decker's influence came out way stronger. It's a book that I enjoy probably two thirds of a lot. And the last third, where I feel like some of the Peretti influence came in, did not mix well. It's extremely confusing and I kind of hate the ending. What a weird book that was. It was also made to a movie, don't watch it. Lowest budget piece of crap you'll ever see. <laughs> Brandon's first book, White Sand Prime, was rewritten and eventually converted into a graphic novel called White Sands. What book would you like to see in another format? I'm actually going to take a reverse sort of take on that since that was a book that was written into a graphic novel. I want to take a graphic novel slash comic book and then say that I think it would make a really interesting book because you would get a lot more exposition and inner monologue and sort of like just, you could get a completely different type of mood out of it, though I think that the visual medium does a really good job. And that is Scott Snyder, the comic book writer wrote a series of Batman stories starting with like the Court of the Owls and the original relaunch of the New 52 Batman storyline. That run, I think it's like 10 or 11 volumes worth of like trade paperbacks, is some of my favorite comic book reading that I've ever done. I think it's extremely interesting and nuanced in, in an awesome way. You get to see a lot of cool Batman stuff if you are a fan of Batman. I feel like it would work even if you aren't like super huge into the Batman backstory because I don't know that much about Batman except what I've seen in mainly the Nolan movies because I hate the Burton movies <laughs> and also the Arkham Asylum video games. But that that comic series, that like 10 or 11 series arc is incredible and amazing. And I think that it would be awesome if it were written in some kind of epic size novel just to freaking dive into it even harder. But also that art is so good that maybe it should just be interspersed within the pages with a lot more text. Scott Snyder, I've been told, is known for being extremely expositional in comic book form, which some people don't like. How about just go all the way and make it into a freaking book? That would be my jam. Brandon writes very quickly, what prolific author or authors would you recommend? I'm going to use this opportunity once again to talk about Ted Decker. No, freaking not Ted Decker this time. Back in the day when I was a kid and I was just getting Getting into starting to read books that weren't just children's books, there was a television show that was on PBS for the book series Redwall. I started reading the Redwall books and fell in love with Brian Jakes and his writing style. I do think that at large, the Redwall series and world and, and things like he's written over 20 books in this series, he was writing one a year, they tend to be a little bit formulaic after some time. But those books are a huge defining piece of my childhood. Like I learned so much about like different types of fantasy storylines because like they as much as I said they are formulaic there's always a different take on a different aspect of like a fantasy trope and I just ate them up as a kid I read so many of his books I was extremely sad when he passed away such a wonderful series in my life additionally Brian Jakes wrote a book that for a long time I read every single year it was like a children's almost like moralistic story but they were like a mixture of like a little bit scary for kids and kind of silly which was called 
Seven Strange and Ghostly Tales. And they were like, I don't know, Grimm's Fairy Tales, but like, it was it's a weird vibe, but I loved it and I read it every year for a long time. In fact, I should do that again this year. Brandon's Cosmere Universe books are grounded in platonic philosophy. What book or series gets you really excited about the source material? Okay, this is gonna sound really Weird, it's been a while since I talked about these books, but I do talk about them a lot. There is a duology called The Extinction Files by the author A.G. Riddle. A.G. Riddle is an author that I am a huge fan of, and I need to finish reading his bibliography. He wrote the series The Extinction Files. The first book in the series is called Pandemic. The second book in the series is called Genome. I realize that now that we are in a global pandemic, it may not be the most interesting read for a lot of people, but before that happened, I read this book and became extremely interested in a concept that I was already a little bit familiar with, which was pandemics and the way that organizations might go with trying to stopping them, seeing how fast they spread. Like I found that concept extremely fascinating. It is unfortunate that it became a reality, though in pandemic, it's way worse, way worse. That made me extremely interested in that topic and I got to do a little bit of research on it. It made me think about that concept a lot. Additionally, on top of that, there's a lot of like quantum science quantum physics, quantum theory that is in those books, as well as some of the other Blake Crouch books that I was reading at the time. And that made me read up on that stuff along with the like Andy Weir short story. Can't remember what it's called. I'll, I'll throw it up there. But science fiction books particularly make me interested in the type of science that they use and play with. It usually makes me at least go look up a few articles or, or wiki pages on that topic. I love it. Brandon loves to show multiple sides of every issue and contrast character values. Please share a book that handles controversy well. Okay, there's a book series by Blake Crouch called The Wayward Pines Trilogy. I freaking love it. I used to talk about a lot more on my channel. I've got some friends that are reading it now. And so I am, am happy that I get to see more discourse about this trilogy because I very much loved it. It was extremely instrumental in the fact that it was the catalyst for me getting back into reading and starting this channel. The Wayward Pines series contains a major trope that I won't necessarily spoil because I don't want to ruin that series if you haven't read it because I highly recommend that you read it. But I guess I'll have to say, for me to answer this question, I'll have to say that it's a love triangle. With when the love triangle was sort of introduced or teased and you, you start figuring it out for yourself before it's explicitly stated, I was getting extremely strong CW TV series vibes. If you love CW, the channel and the TV series that they make, that's okay for you. I can't do it. I can't, I've tried so many times the CW and it, the way that it writes series and characters is not for me. I am not the target demographic. I thought they were going to go that route with a love triangle that popped up. Instead, I was pleasantly surprised with the nuance of some of the imperfect emotions that the characters in the series are going through and the way that it was handled. It just kind of got me. Like I thought they did a really good job. Is it still a little silly because it's a, a love triangle? Yes, but also... I was okay with it. I was surprisingly okay with it. Brandon Sanderson is a writing teacher, and unlike some writing teachers, he posts his lectures online for free. What free literature resource are you grateful for? The most obvious answer in the entire world is BookTube. BookTube has changed the way that I live my life. It changes the way that I read books. It changes the books that I read. Everything about BookTube, recommendations, reviews, friendships, etc., is a free resource, and I have come to rely on that for a huge part of my social life and my entertainment. I love BookTube. That's probably number one. The obvious other answer is like the library. I love the freaking library. I love the Libby app and the fact that you can get audiobooks and books sent to my Kindle or my phone for free, or I can go to the library if it's open. Right now ours has restrictions, but I can get books from the library and that's incredible. It's amazing. For people that aren't able to buy books or for people that wanna read more books than they're able to afford, it is a wonderful way of getting access to literature, good literature, new literature, old literature, and being able to read it. It's a wonderful thing for our communities. I love the library so much. I made a video with the library loves tag a long time ago where I got to gush about libraries. So much of my historical life with reading was tied to libraries, so many good memories, volunteering, doing stuff at the libraries, amazing. People that work at libraries, you guys do amazing work. I love you so much. And now I get to tag friends to do this tag as well, hopefully. First of all, I wanna tag Memo Death Books, Memo Death Books, I'm not positive how to pronounce your channel name, but your channel is awesome. I love it. The way that you do reviews, even when you're doing a negative review, it's extremely enjoyable for me. And I followed your channel for a kind of a while now, and I'm honestly surprised that you don't have more subscribers. I want to send people your way because I, I think what you're doing over there is extremely fun and cool. Mellow Death Books, 
consider yourself tagged. Everyone, go to his channel now. Also, Angela at the Literature Science Alliance. We've been friends for a while. I have no idea how somehow you did not get tagged in this tag, but I'm using this opportunity to tag you. She's one of the biggest Branderson, Branderson, son of a gun. She's one of the biggest Branderson Sanderson fans I know on this platform. Please, Angela, do this tag. <laughs> Reads with Casera. She has an amazing channel. She talks about fantasy, romance. She reads a lot of stuff really kind of all over the board, but she has an awesome channel. And I feel like a lot of the people that I talk to on booktube don't necessarily know about her channel. So I'm going to use this opportunity to send you over there. Reads with Casera. Casera, consider yourself tagged. I know you love the Stormlight Archive. I know you're excited for Rhythm of War. Here's the Brandon Sanderson tag for you. Books Rebound, a channel that has done the wonderful work of recommending things to me repeatedly in the hopes that I would read them, namely Guy Gavriel K. And Books Rebound has been the strongest advocate for me reading the series, the Malazan, Malazan, Book of the Fallen series, which has been on my radar, but it kind of falls off. He has done the wonderful advocating work of constantly bringing it up to me, keeping it in my brain and making me want to read it because he, he he's so passionate about it on his channel. Books Rebound, consider yourself tagged. And lastly, but not leastly, one of the other biggest Brandon Sanderson, especially Stormlight Archive fans that I know of on this platform, Brightness Katie Reads. Katie, we've made a little bit of conversation about the Stormlight Archive. We both share that in common. I know you also love Brandon Sanderson's other works. I don't think you've been tagged in this tag yet, so I am extremely grateful to be able to tag you. Katie, consider yourself tagged. Everyone, please go check out all of those channels that I just mentioned. I'm going to link all of their channels down below. Those are all channels that I love. Thank you so much for watching this tag. Thank you so much, Christy, for making this tag. It's a wonderful one. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go out and be excellent to each other. I'll see you next time. Always looking out tired sleep. No one ever get enough. If it don't show up, I might get fired sleep. No one ever get enough. Always looking out tired sleep. No one ever get enough. If it don't show up, I might get fired.